would like to introduce you, my friends. We met each other first time in Valencia, in Spain, and now okay. Martinique. Martinique. Right. We made it across the Atlantic. <laughs> we made so it across the Atlantic. Did. Yes. And uh, we met uh, each other maybe one week ago here. By the way, the name of boat is John. Yes. Joanna. Joanna. Um, yes. Joanna. So. <laughs> so my name is Bernie. I'm 29 years old. And um, well, about two years ago, we decided to go on a journey like this. So we got to say a boat. Why you decided? To say this? <laughs> huh? Why? It is a too complicated life. So better to sit somewhere in the office. <laughs> Would have been yeah. easier. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So talking about the complicated life, we had a really complicated day to restock on fuel, diesel, water. Everything is more complicated, but we decided to. It is like a groundhog day, every day like the same day, and a sailing boat. Of course, it's a cool life, but anyway, yeah. explaining this to people who working from 9 to 5 every day, sometimes from uh, 8 to 11 p.m., <laughs> they uh, look to you and say like, ah, it is a dream, but reality is a different, we know. But we people know. who <laughs> don't know this, for them, it's a little bit different life. Why you decide to change your life and uh, start sailing? Well, it was always a, a big dream to um, well go explore and have the, the time that you want in a certain place. So very often when you go on vacation, you just fly for one week to some place. And you know, you have one week to do um, all the sightseeing in that place. And then the vacation is over and you're flying back home. And uh, living on a boat, traveling on a boat, gives you the, uh, the chance and the possibility to explore places with time. Uh, to meet locals, to meet guys like you, uh, that, we, that you see in, uh, in Valencia, and then hey, half a year later. Me, yeah. Yes, <laughs> and uh, a lot of different cool sailors. Yeah. But maybe it is a more question to you. What do you think? Uh, it, is a, it was a, some expectations before you start sailing, and uh, the real life. How different it was and how different it is now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we always knew that it will be complicated in terms of how do I get fresh water. I always have to check the weather and then I cannot stay in one place on anchor because the swell is so bad and there are just... Well, we knew before that it won't be holiday. And it's not because you have... The hard just, work. To, it's just you have different challenges, different problems. But in the end, it's just an incredible feeling to be on a journey like this. To see, like right now, the sunset behind the hills and to enjoy a beautiful sunset every day. And then just... And drinks. And drinks. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Stefan, you have a very cool boat because uh, it is an X. Yes. Uh, it is an X41 or... 412, so it's yeah. 41 foot 41. long. But it is a uh, kind of sport cruiser. Yes. Am I right? Yeah. 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 Why uh, this boat? Because it is a not uh, like mass market boat. It is a just you know a little bit few steps above. Yes. Why you decide to choose exactly this boat and why not to go to the more cheaper option? Well, several reasons. Says uh, I learned uh, sailing on these boats and I know them as uh, very reliable, very robust boats that, that are built in a, in a very nice way. At the same time they have a good performance and they are quite fast. And we had situations um, and with low wind where everybody else was going on the engine and we were passing other guys on the sails. Uh, and, and we had, a, I remember that there was a big um, one of these mass market boats, 50, 54 foot boat, and he really pushed his engine with the big uh, black smoke coming out of the boat, and we were still faster on the sails. Yeah? And, uh, and this is uh, what you can do on a, on a X yacht, which you probably can't do on a on a one of these mass market boats, which are certainly a cheaper option. Yes. It was uh, your first uh, Atlantic uh, experience. It was my second Atlantic crossing. So what what was your average speed in uh, exactly this boat uh, when you came? Oh, um, do you know? <laughs> I can't. Seven or eight? It. Yeah. Seven or eight knots, like something. Average? Like yeah, as an average. So <laughs> quite happy. And we and we didn't use our engine. Yeah, maybe crossing. maybe because you had uh, a wind on your way because we didn't. Yeah. 
at all, at all. So we yeah, use halfway uh, Ginaker and halfway engine. Yeah. So how was your trip? And uh, from which point did you start? And uh, to which point did you come? So we went, uh, we went down to the uh, Canary Islands uh, and um, left uh, from Gran Canaria. Mm-hmm. Which is um, with the I, Ark or by yourself? We went with the Ark uh-huh. okay. and uh, was a well good option also to, to do um, uh, shopping and provisioning etc. And from there we went uh, to Saint Lucia, um, um, followed the, the route of the Ark, yep. and uh, we, had, we had good winds. That uh, was a very exceptional Ark, um, very fast Ark. Uh, How many boats was it? Two hundred fifty boats in total. Uh, Two hundred fifty. And. Uh, so uh, all the different divisions, uh, the monohulls, the catamarans, the racing division, etc. Whatever. And yeah, we had uh, we had um, trade winds um, basically from the beginning and then until we reached the uh, the Caribbean. And uh, because you asked me about the, the speed, uh, probably we, we could have been even faster. Um, we didn't use our Jenica, we didn't use our spin or a spinnaker. Uh, just on the main and the Genoa, uh, for the long passages, I, I rather prefer to be a bit conservative, not to break anything. Yeah, uh, because and if the you're, night, at least if you're to sleep, exactly yeah. <laughs> to sleep uh, in the night, uh, while when you are in a protected uh, bay like here, no wave, no wind, and you want to compete with other boats, then uh, it's of course nice to have the, the right performance. So. How many how many days uh, it takes to you to cross Atlantic? We had um, 18 days. Uh, that it took us for the crossing. In some hours. 18, it yep. is a quite good result because normally it's from 19 to 21, so it's average. So your result is a quite good. Yeah. Happy, happy with that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, which advantage, uh, advantages and disadvantages to own board like this? Well, the, the, probably the biggest disadvantage is <laughs> to own a boat. <laughs> you, you have trouble. You, you pay a lot of money to have uh, trouble and thoughts that you didn't have before. So uh, that is the biggest uh, disadvantage of owning a boat. Um, so you're talking about advantages now. Yeah, advantages. Both, both <laughs> well, you're, you're living at home, uh, and uh, and you no, can. No, I mean, uh, it on, is a, a, on a ice. racer, on a yeah, yeah. yeah performance cruiser. Uh, well, biggest advantage is the, is the speed that you have, yeah. uh, and you have. Uh, um, I mean, it is a technical sailing um, with all the trim options. We have a proper uh, traveler, Cunningham, all those additional features that uh, a, a normal cruiser probably wouldn't have. Um, uh, we, we have here to do a fine trim of the sails and really get to the right performance level. The downside is we. We are relatively light in terms of, of weight, uh, so we have uh, mm-hmm. 7.4 tons uh, it's a very of weight. Light. It's, it's, a very it's very light. light. Yeah. Um, it, it comes with that that we don't have too much uh, storage um, on the boat uh, because everything is a bit tiny and uh, also under deck. I, I can stand, but I don't have a lot of headroom. Uh, but, uh, and, um, about this, I, th- I think it's better to show your boat, but it, it uh, could be a little bit later. Yeah. So, yeah. But, and uh, um, yeah, that is probably one of the disadvantages. Or when you entered our boat and came here into the cockpit, you said, oh, that, that's cozy. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is cozy. For sailing, it's cool because you have very short distances and yeah, you can, you can feeling, handle feeling. all the lines uh, from, from one position. Uh, when you, I mean, if we compare it with your boat, sitting outside, you, you have a huge terrace in the garden. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> backyard. <laughs> backyard. Yeah, backyard. Yeah, exactly. Let's go to yeah. backyard. <laughs> and this is something we don't have on the, on the 41 foot. Yeah. Uh, you have a some uh, different stuff, like for example uh, the main sail traveler. Yeah. I don't care, but I already bought it and I will install it. You will install it. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> you also get it. As yeah, a, but I will install nice, it. It's a nice feature, of course, uh, for uh, for racing, for the performance, but uh, especially here in the Caribbean when you when you have the, the gusty winds and sometimes no, no, the yeah, wind yeah. picks it up and then you just, just put it yeah. to the leeward and take out the pressure. That that really helps. As yeah, a, it's yes, a very it's nice security. feature also uh, for a cruising. Uh, it a is very a nice feature. And that's what about the boat again. You feel safe. You feel you feel really safe on the boat. So in a, uh, in terms of uh, woman uh, on a boat, yeah. how difficult it is uh, to do? Because I have many friends and uh, their wives and girlfriends all the time asked us. Uh, how it is? How, how, how difficult it is to leave? Uh, I mean, uh, not like in a 
big house or apartment with all infrastructure around. It is a little bit different. About you, I understand. For men, it, it, it's okay just drinking water from a tap, you know. Water? Uh, you drink water? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't care <get> what? <laughs> so well, aesthetic. Uh, so <laughs> aesthetic. <laughs> But uh, about uh, what about you? How um, do you feel, uh, or um, for example, for different people who just you know on a on a balance to do or not to do? How uh, do you feel yourself? How comfortable do you feel yourself uh, when you live on a boat? I feel really comfortable because. But it's because of him. <laughs> <laughs> well. No, the thing is, I love being on a boat because I love being close to water and to, to be really close to water means a lot of freedom to me. It's, it's really relaxing I just love to go sailing. Of course, there are a lot of challenges on a boat or to live on a boat like this. And I guess the biggest challenge for me is that we don't have so much fresh water, so we don't have a water maker. And okay, yeah. it's possible to solve the problem. So it is a just, you know, you can solve it and uh, don't it's feel you uncomfortable. It is a maybe. It's an invest. Exactly. Yeah, it's it an invest. Exactly yeah. in this time, yes. yes. But I mean, just if you look on this with uh, some perspective, you know, with uh, yeah. some, uh, you know, glance ahead. Yes. It, so. I think it is a no big problem if you have it. So no, just it's, it's some not. small investment, or not yes. small, it's quite valuable investment <laughs> because the water maker is a ducking. Yeah. Expensive. So 5,000, 6,000 euros. Yeah, uh, minimum, that's, yeah. I think. that's the starting point. Right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And sometimes talking about problems which are typical for women. I have very long hair. You and need not, to, not yeah, being able it. to wash my hair regularly is a challenge. So on the Atlantic, I washed it maybe three times. And then after a couple of days... It Just lazy uh, through reaching. <laughs> 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 yeah, but, well, that's a challenge. It's, it's always... Um, there are always some difficult parts about this life, but in the end, it's absolutely amazing. I, I agree with you, but yeah. I just, it is for people who just... But you don't have just much sing. hair. <laughs> uh, on, the, on the chest. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, what did you do before you start sailing? What was your job before? Uh, I was in acoustics, mm -hmm. and um, I'm a musician. And, um, Did you play music or uh, writing songs? More specific, just can you yes. explain? So, um, also on this journey I would like to combine my two passions. Uh, the first passion is sailing and being out in the water. And the second passion is yeah, composing music. And so I brought my little piano with me. I mean, ah. we have a small boat, but even if we have a small boat, I was allowed to bring my So small sometimes, piano. sometimes it's better to allow to do something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So I, I need this just to sit down and to, I mean, with all these emotions linked to this journey, I try to to put all this together and create new pieces of music. So I compose soundtracks and I use the soundtracks for our movies and also to, for other small projects. And this, this is what I love doing. Do you have your YouTube channel? Yes. They have YouTube channel. Yes, they have YouTube channel. It, it could be in the description of this video. Look here, and uh, you will find everything. Yes. So, uh, what is the name of your channel? The name of the channel is Sailing Foxes. Yeah. And my name as a musician is BernieFoxMusic.com. So uh -huh. That's um, just the domain. We will provide that information in the video in the description as well. Yeah. Yes. So this is where you can find all the information and yes that's what I love doing. <laughs> yeah, what about you? Well, I'm I'm an engineer. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, it is a very useful knowledge. It is. <laughs> it is very very useful. So I'm um, yeah. uh, I worked in product development and uh, but yeah, where, so where did you from? Where so I'm, I'm from, uh, from, well, from Munich, from Germany. We're both yeah. from, uh, from Germany. Oh, we didn't uh, mention that in the beginning. Yeah. So, um, it is a not, only, not only engineer, it's very efficient. In <laughs> <laughs> last year, last years, uh, we lived in Munich, so uh, in, the, in the south of Germany. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, of course, having a technical understanding helps. In a boat, uh, yeah, yes. in a boat, uh, it helps a lot. <laughs> Can you estimate, if I decide uh, to buy a boat, like this plus min plus minus maybe three five years what's the range of prices uh, from a bottom to sky 
I mean the range. Um, more or less, it is. Uh, we don't need exact figures. Yeah. So just you know, just for estimation. Um, my, you mean now this type of boat here, or general to go cruising on? No, 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 no. This exactly this, on type, this type, type of boat. Yeah, yeah. Of, I don't know the the, the cheapest. Uh, you, I mean, it, it was produced in in on, over a quite uh, long range. If I remember right, the first boats uh, came into production in 1990. Uh, and this one here was one of the last, very, very last ones to be produced in 2003. Yes. So it is a very long range. Uh, and of but course, I mean just plus minus yeah, and three the, years, and the, like and the, from 2000 to 2000. Well, the, the, cheapest, the cheapest boats, and they are all identical. Uh, the no, cheapest it doesn't matter, just the, maybe with uh, different options. Uh, it, is, it could be multiply two, but anyway, yeah, the range. So, so the, the range of cheapest boats that you get as, a, uh, as these are starting at 60,000 euros. Yeah. Uh, but then you probably have to do a lot of investment if you want to go on cruising. Yeah, uh, so it is a very cheap one. And, uh, yeah, but they are worn out, they, they need a lot of maintenance and, and, yeah. and care, and these are probably one of the first boats that were built. Uh, and then, um, yeah, if you get to the upper range, uh, 130, 140, 150 for very well maintained, and uh, yeah, it depends on how much equipment is in there. Yes, of course, yes, it is. A, and uh, it's also a big difference which flag it is. So, if it is a European Union flag, it is a one way because the tax is already paid. If it is a, some tax free zone, it could be uh, minus 30, 50 percent from it. So, it is a very big difference in it. Yeah. Okay, let's. Uh, can you show, please, uh, maybe firstly from outside? From the outside? Yes, yeah, and, and uh, you explain about your cool stuff, what I love. <laughs> I already noticed some stuff which I would like to put a finger on it and say, oh, when you can you have? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, let's okay. go. Let's go. You have a, a high performance Harken because in a low performance, this part is a plastic like we have. Yeah. But you have a... Yeah, it's a aluminium. It's a, it's a very solid. We, we uh, had it uh, open and, and serviced it already a couple of times. Uh, and now it's, uh, the boat is 15 years old, the winters are 15 years old, but on the inside it still looks super, super good and super well maintained. Oh, I see. It, is, it, uh, needs, it, looks, it needs maintenance. Yeah. Huh? You need to, to do any something. Boat, any, any boat, boat needs maintenance, yeah. uh, but uh, these are super reliable. What I really like are the, are the jammers. Uh, these type of jammers, because very hammers, often yeah. uh, you have you need to open a jammer yeah. and, and keep it open this way, yeah? and then you do something on the sail. Somebody steps on it, breaks it. Uh -huh. uh, these type of jammers here, you open and close it. Ah, and you have and a, the like little, a fuse. Yeah, and the little red tab keeps it open. Yeah, ah, and it is, uh, but it, it so looks like exactly like a fuses. Yeah, like a fuse. And so you put it, so you you put it on the winch, and and you work with it. And when you're done, yeah, you lock it, and uh, now it's locked. Huh. Yeah, and I never saw way, it before. It's cool. And yeah. in that way, uh, you nobody can step on the on the open handle and 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 break it. Uh, so. Yeah, but uh, is it convenient for you to keep all the ropes in the bags? Because I uh, replace it with uh, just hooks, and I have it. You can here. you can do either way. Uh, oh I, yeah, I yeah. Prefer, but I about you. Yeah. I did. Uh, I I exchanged many many of the lines uh, with the state of the art uh, ropes. Um, mm -hmm. Dyneema. Uh, so uh, yeah, Dyneema is a good these one. These things, yeah. if you look, um, it is expensive one, at least. Yeah. This is one of the original ones, 14 millimeters. Uh huh. Uh, excuse me. So, <laughs> <laughs> now this one here is uh, is our main halyard. Uh, if you compare those two, uh, um, yeah, the main to, 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 to Times it's eight, oh, yeah, that's eight millimeter yeah, and it has a higher brake load than yeah, because uh, it's dynamo, yeah, 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 and it's dynamo. And uh, with a thinner diameter, it gives you the advantage that you have less friction in all of the the points where you deflect a uh, line, the deck organizer, or uh, also the, the sheaves at the, the, the pulley at the top of the mast. Yeah. yeah, the thinner the rope is, the less friction you but have. Uh, at least it is a more smooth if there's a diamet yes. diameter of the yes. rope, is a yeah, small yeah. one, so uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's. And, oh, uh, you have, have a so big. Uh, we have uh, yeah. the uh, the winches. Uh, so we have in total six winches. We have the one um, here. Man, six uh, winches. It is a very cool because I have four and it is a nightmare. So when you decide to remove a Genoa and install and uh, put uh, Genica. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not enough winches. Huh? Well, yeah. we, we have sufficient winches and uh, bright, uh, quite big ones. Uh, so the ones here for all the reefing lines, for the halyards, uh, etc. Then we have uh, one which is reserved for the uh, Genoa. Yep. Uh, where we will also run our uh, Genica sheets, and uh, the one at the at the rear is the uh, um, the main uh, sheet. 
Um, it, all of them are manual, yeah? No electric. All manual. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can argue uh, if it's nicer to have electrical or, or manual is. one, but, it is. Uh, but I all all electrical, it's possible yeah, every, to use everything, a candle. Yeah, every, yeah th that's true. Uh, but everything uh, what is electrical can break. Yeah, and, but uh, you can um, continue to use your uh, candle well, for it. Uh, I said, is it is a philosophy? Yeah, but I've, mm -hmm. I've met many people uh, with electric winters uh, which broke things on the boat. Uh, because you don't have the feel for the load, uh, and uh, something is very. I disagree with you just yeah. because uh, <laughs> if it is your boat, you, you, you probably need it very maybe, well. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, but well, <laughs> so we are we are happy. We are happy with the manual ones. You have yeah. a so huge steering wheel. Yeah. That they, the is it co wheel? convenient? I never tried the to sail wheel. with it. No, the the nice thing is with the steering wheel. You can see you sit it on it somewhere here on the side. Uh, and, and cozy and relaxed, um, leaning back, uh, and you're steering just with one finger. That's yeah, because it, it is a big one. It's a big, it's a big wheel. Uh, we don't have, uh, we don't have um, a chain and cables. We have a solid uh, rod, like you have in the in the car, your steering column, uh -huh. and that directly goes to the to the rudder, and it's a, it's a pre-balanced rudder, so you don't feel a big force of the rudder, and that makes it very very. But anyway, the boat uh, with a serious X X boat, yeah. what the, what the, it's a brand. Yeah. Yeah, so it is a, a high performance, so they exactly. are normally yeah. quite very well balanced. And, um, yeah. Yeah, and that is the, the disadvantage is if you're in an anchorage or like here in the Caribbean and you're living on the boat and not sailing, uh, it, it blocks uh, the way out uh, over over the stern because uh, you always have to go around the, the steering wheel. But um, if you if we take off the the center nut, center nut of the steering wheel, it's um, two minutes of work to take it off and put yeah, it on and the side. Yeah, and put it on or, or on the top. On the to top. The arc. Uh, yeah. Which uh, chart plotter do you have? Uh, we have a Raymarine, um, yeah, E E7 or something like that. Uh -huh. So, um, is it enough no, nothing, for you? Nothing fancy. It's absolutely enough. It's uh, just as an option up here at the at the helm, uh, and uh, basically the the rest we do with the uh, avionics and uh, on the on, on iPhone or uh, yeah on, on Generally, which uh, do do you use a, a chart plotter which pre-installed in your boat, or do you use a tablet or telephone when you as sail? You as the main sort of navigation, mm -hmm. uh, we use a tablet. And phone. Oh, okay. So the chart plotter is uh, it connects all the system. The, the it brings all yeah, the information yeah, yeah, together. All information, of, of yeah. Wind and uh, and the, the wind AIS, instruments uh, and that's and it. Yeah, etc. Et yeah. yeah. Another one cool stuff. It is a big main sail trawler. <laughs> <laughs> you like it, huh? Yes, I like it. <laughs> yeah, Let's that's uh, that's a solid one. <laughs> How big sails do you have? Uh, we have um, the, uh, the the main sail is about 40 square meter, and um, the Genoa that we have on right now is uh, about the same size. Uh, so you have a 50/50. Exactly uh, of the distribution. Uh, we have um, a, a very big Genoa, um, but uh, that that is at home, uh, almost 65 square meter. Okay. Uh, but that is too much to handle with uh, two persons. You, you can get it up, but yep. the fun starts when you try to bring it down. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I know it is a many different options. So, you can buy uh, a boat with a sail, which is a full in a mast, or in a boom, or lazy back, or without back. Which one do you prefer? So, um, uh, pre <clears throat> what we have is uh, without lazy backs, um, just and, with a full in hull. A, a traditional, a traditional with a main for reefing. Right? Yeah, exactly. With a with a classical reefing, yeah, and then we have removable um, lazy jacks. Yeah. Uh, and we have a have a cover on that. Uh, but so you that you don't have a lazy lazy jacks. We you have know, lazy you jacks. Uh, you see, uh, they are on on the little hooks, uh, so they are not. Ah, uh, okay. I see. Not, I see. Um, tapping against the mast and making noise. Uh huh. The exactly. bars like this is a more for racing. Yes, it is more for racing. Yeah, but. Uh, we 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 are not racing that much. And, so you're and, not uh, overloading it. Exactly, we're not overloading, and also from uh, from uh, what we saw before when we when we uh, uh, when we got the boat uh, and um, when I, when I investigated uh, on the previous owners before I bought it, then um, what I could find out is they also didn't use it for heavy racing. Uh, so I have, so I have not good trust. It, no. I, I have good trust in the rig. What I ducking like in this boat. Look at him and how he's standing on 
<laughs> it's, it's one of the, the, the great things in, uh, in this design. Yes. Uh, that, the, that the stays come down on the, on the inside. And uh, well, one of the, the, the nice things on the, on the x is uh, they, they have um, inside the boat, so the hull is very lightweight. Yeah. Uh, but uh, on the inside at the bottom, they have a metal structure, which is the, the backbone. And the mast is standing on the metal structure. And, the, and the, uh, these are also connected to the metal structure. And that makes it very, very stiff. And then the hull is just made around it that no water enters. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that gives the advantage uh, that the stays come down I think really uh, on cool the inside. In my boat, to get on a ball, I need to do it like this. Uh, and uh, yeah, and here, <laughs> here it the, just the, go. <laughs> the, the, big, the, big, the, the nice thing is you have the very wide uh, deck uh, for walking. Also, you have a lot of space here, uh, and you can easily uh, pass it. Uh, and, yeah. Uh, easily go to the front. I see you have a baby stay. It is a form storm sail, or is it just no, uh, uh, regular just, baby stay? Just for uh, just for trimming. Uh, ah, okay. Just, uh, for trimming. So you have also regular fuller in a Genoa. Do you yeah. have a Genoa or is this a Jeep? Uh, well, this is a hundred percent Genoa Jeep. Uh, or Jeep. Uh, Jeep so yeah. I think, um, yeah, and uh, we. Uh, there is a, a big Genoa uh, on on this boat. Probably nothing uh, you would uh, need in the Caribbean uh, or for uh, for yeah. ocean sailing because it's um, it's just too much. Uh, yeah, sail area. Okay, which uh, windlass do you have? So I see you have an 8 millimeter chain. 8 millimeter chain, we have a low friends windlass. Uh, and um, uh, one, hundred, one kilowatt or uh, it's 800? It's a one, one kilowatt. One kilowatt, one kilowatt. okay. That's, uh, that's uh, uh, quite sufficient. One of the, the modifications we did, what you see here, we don't have a, um, a spinnaker on, okay. uh, on this boat. Um, and uh, this is a, a Jenneker boom that I made myself with a removable uh, water stay. Uh -huh. uh, so um, yeah, if, if we want to fly the Jenneker, we, we can use uh, that point because um, uh, these boats were built to be used with uh, spinnakers uh, as, as a proper racing boat. Uh, but uh, yeah. Where do you keep your pool? We, we don't have a spinnaker Ah, this pool. is just you it, use it, it for a uh, it, it, uh, okay, okay, it, didn't, okay. it never had the option uh, of, uh, of uh, spinnaker. Okay. Uh, and we now run it with a Jenneker because that is something you can do with two people. Spinnaker you can No, it is, uh, it is uh, easy, yeah. Let's... And uh, the boom that we have here, that is uh, just an uh, out hauler, uh, which we used uh, on the Atlantic. So it's a telescopic but Did you uh, use it for uh, Jenneker or did you use it for uh, Jeep? No, for the, for the Jeep. Uh, we just uh, had the main out on one yeah. side and then the jib like pulled butterfly. out on the other side. Like butterfly. Except, yeah, butterfly. Oh, okay, so let's maybe go inside. Yeah, let's do that. So, let's go inside. So, I see you have a quite sharp angle to get in. Yes. Yeah, it is. So, it is. the best way to get inside Mind your camera, you... mind your beer. <laughs> it's, uh, it's yeah, but it's, mind your beer. <laughs> but uh, it is, uh, it's just four steps that disconnect the inside from the outside. Uh, uh -huh. and, uh, so, um, yeah, sometimes it's some uh, climbing, um, especially when... If you run, yeah. Uh, yeah. But on, on other boats, uh, what you see, it's um, especially when you have a center cockpit, uh, you have a uh, really, it's, it's a different floor. Yeah, and you need it, to yeah, it is. Climb up one floor. And uh, which engine do you have? Uh, we have a Volvo Penta, yep. um, D255 horsepower, mm -hmm. which is uh, of decent size given our yeah, relatively decent long weight. light. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, uh, so it is a main uh, cabin. <laughs> this is our main cabin, so this is where we have, well, it's, it's the middle of where we live. Okay, actually we live outside, but here is where we do all the navigation. So, so these, these are our storage spaces. So we yeah, have norm normally, uh, yes. <laughs> so usually... Those and there's are a second one as well? Yes. So we have two cabins in the rear, but um, usually we use it as uh, storage spaces because we have... If you live in a boat, you normally to we you have use it at least one for a storage or two. Yes, but we are... Our boat is too small and we have too much stuff. So it we, is a... You, I cannot say that it is a too small boat. It is a normal size boat. Yeah, yours. I think yours is extremely spacious. I cannot uh, say that this area. Yeah, it is a little bit bigger, but I have a forty-five. It is yeah, a forty-one. Uh, it is a relatively. I saw many boats, but this one I cannot say it is a small boat. It's a big boat inside. Yeah, it is a much bigger inside than uh, you can 
guests from outside. We actually have heating. Uh, I mean, we used it in the Mediterranean last year. Yeah, but so... not in the Caribbean. No. <laughs> I mean, they say that you should switch it on like every two months or something like this, and then it's it's, it's really hard to switch on heating in the Caribbean. Yeah. But, but it's... what's the consumption of uh, diesel? Uh, just yeah. average. What's the consumption? Little, almost, it's almost not nothing. Much. It's like uh, even one if liter? we have uh, half a no. liter per hour, half liter? when we have it uh, in, in the winter in the in, in the in the Mediterranean, uh, running on full power, is almost nothing. And where is the blower? Well, we have uh, one blower outlet down there. Yes. And then in each of the cabins is a is a blower outlet. Okay, it is uh, like a uh, water going or no no it's a, it's a is it? heat uh, is a uh, just hot air. Yes, uh, and um, it is a pipes which is with a hot pipes, air. Pipes going with uh, through the entire boat with hot air, and uh, then uh, last year, um, well, I noticed uh, while well, still being in the Mediterranean and being in the winter on the boat, I noticed that the uh, air in the front for, cabin yeah. isn't too hot yeah. anymore. So uh -huh. I made the effort of insulating all of the out, uh, of the uh, tubes. Uh, and now we really get uh, also very hot air in the in the front part of the ship and uh, very good distribution of the hot air. Huh? Is it a big consumption of electricity? The the fan the fan. fan yeah, I'm talking just generally about. So fan. we have uh, six seven amperes uh, for the heating, which is not the heating itself; it's the fan of the heating. Yeah, the blower. So it is a quite uh, quite a lot. It is, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. so uh, you have a, is it a freezer or what is this? Well, that's uh, just a fridge. So, um, and as we just spent two weeks in Martinique, mm -hmm. it's really uh -huh. full. So this oh, it is, is oh, quite have, big. We have a little freezer with some ice cubes, uh -huh, but see. basically right now the fridge is just full of cheese. But, it's just, but it, it is only one way to load it from the top. Yeah. Yes, so if uh, but usually, it goes all the way down to the bottom. Yes, it goes it goes all the way um, to the bottom and also like um, behind. It's possible to get inside from a from a side or no? Only no. from the top. So this is one of the challenges that we were talking about before. If you would like to have something in the fridge, usually it's just on the bottom and you have to <laughs> take everything out and just just to get it. And so in, in our boat uh, we have a side loading. It is more convenient, That's but really it is more convenient, but it consumes uh, significantly more energy because every time you open the door, all yes, the cold air is, is going flowing out. out Sure, and then yeah. the uh, the fridge needs to cool down again. Yeah, so but in terms of energy efficiency, this is yes, much better. Yes, but uh, in a, uh, in our case, uh, it, I cannot say that it is a, a lot of energy. It consumes a lot of energy. Just moderate, okay. Regular stall. Yeah, yeah very, very normal, very basic, yeah. which moves okay. in the waves. So we have two, yes. two uh -huh. outlets of, of, of propane. So we use yeah. propane for cooking. And um, yeah. So we usually, and we have an oven. Of course, we have an oven to make bread. Yeah, it is a very cozy sofa, I see. But it, I, I think it's your office. This is my office, yes. So when I'm not on this um, table, I'm in my uh, music studio. So uh -huh. um, sometimes I just um, put all of the stuff in the front cabin because it's more quiet. Uh -huh. So we had uh, some, we had some funny situations where I try to make a recording. I just put on the mi microphone and just wanted to make a recording, and then there are dinghies passing by. Yes. There are thirty yes. Yes. Wind. Yes. <laughs> And today, I forgot to switch off the VHF, and there was someone calling someone like, "Oh no!" Because the recording was actually really good, and then I had some guy on the VHF just behind me and uh, screwed it all up. <laughs> so um, recording on a sailboat is very challenging, and but I do it anyways. It just takes longer, like everything else takes longer on a boat. Uh, yeah. I'm not just because I'm recording video as well. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> same, <laughs> same situation. Same situation. Can you play something? Uh, yes, I can, I can. I can play something like a little bit. So. Um,
which is actually called Roland Juno DS, which is a really good instrument, I can just create a whole orchestra. So you heard like bass, drums, some pet sounds, piano sounds. I can all combine it into one piece and can actually perform live. So it's all a lot of instruments just put into this little this little device and then I just connect it to a laptop and record it. I see the microphone. Yes. Do you song? Do you sing song? No. I don't. Why do you use it? This is for karaoke? No, no, it's the <laughs> So no I this is a very, very, very basic microphone. It doesn't matter, but probably <laughs> you use it for somehow. I don't know. Yes, I, I, use, it, I use it for the voiceover for movies. So. Ah, okay, for voiceover. Yes. Okay. So do you do you have your YouTube channel? Yes, yes. This is this is our YouTube channel where everything lands on, like the movies oh, okay. about our journey, the music, like everything into one channel. What's the name of your YouTube channel? It's uh, Sailing Foxes. Where where normally do you sleep? We sleep in the front cabin. I mean, what you can see here is, well, we had laundry day today, so uh -huh. um, it's still a bit wet and so as it gets dark outside and a bit colder, so um, we try to hang with some of the last t-shirts just like here. But it's enough space. Is it a good ventilation? Uh, yes, it's a perfect ventilation. Yeah. So with wind, on anchor wind coming from the front, just open the hatch. Front, Actually, really big front hatch is enough. So we get a really fresh breeze in our boat and it's really comfortable. Cool. Yeah. Ah, yeah. You have a manual toilet? Yes, that's our toilet. Okay. And, um, it's still with a big bars. Nice. Yes, it's, uh, well, it's really big. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is, it is a really big. I mean, for boats, it is really big and spacious. Yeah. And you can also hold on to to this rails and it's um, and the shower is the same place yeah it, yeah, it is a shower, the same for rinsing water from a shower i mean yeah you can you can just take a shower by just taking uh -huh. this okay nice yeah so. so guys we visited sailing foxes and uh i would like to say just have a cool life in the ocean in the water in the everywhere you want and uh, you have a very cool and very reliable boat and I think this boat could manage all your trip from around the world. <laughs> so, uh, by the way, do you think to travel around the world? Uh, this time not. Um, but maybe. So maybe, maybe in a second journey. Uh, in a different boat? Or this um, one? We don't, we don't know. But we don't know. it is a cool plan. Well, of course, the plan it is. It always starts with a plan like this. Yes. Uh, we had uh, two years before our plan departure date. We took a little uh, piece of rope and made centimeter markers on it. And every month we cut away one little piece of that rope. Yeah. Uh, and in oh, that nice. way, in that way, uh, we always had, and, and that rope was hanging in our apartment. So we always knew, okay, that is our plan, and that is the time left before the day zero, <laughs> before we start, uh, and, uh, yeah. So, so that is shaking so hands, <laughs> it is a short line. Uh, probably, exactly. I so mean, probably we were so stressed out that actually we didn't cut the last month. Uh, we yes. just forgot it. But uh, maybe, maybe <laughs> also two for, your, uh, for your, uh, for your um, well, listeners or, or your followers, uh, if, if they really want to have or really have that plan, um, then uh, yeah. Take, set yourself a date when you want to start. Yeah, and, you need a uh, timeline. You take a piece a of rope or, um, I don't know, you have uh, sometimes these paper centimeter uh, things uh, where you can cut off every month a centimeter. But and by, that way by the secret it is the application with a manage the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you do it with an application, yeah. We, we thought the manual, it is a modern way, life. The manual way, the manual way. I mean, way a piece is, of rope uh, looks nice. Uh, the manual way is uh, much nicer. Put a male stone, like tight knot, you know. Uh, I mean, some people Project put flowers management. in their apartment and yeah. we just have a little It is a so, of it, uh, offline software for project management. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. guys, follow us, follow my friend on uh, YouTube, and see you soon. Bye-bye!